Welcome to Make Something with me, David Petrino, and today I'm gonna to give you a tour of my metal shop. I am just getting into metal working, so I just started acquiring tools. We are in our car garage, so we gotta back the car out, and a lot of times I have to wheel the tools out to use them. First things first, this right here, this guy, not bolted down, this is my vice. This came with the house. It's not bolted down because sometimes I need it over here, sometimes over there, but it does come in handy. This is a really, really nice to have. Belt grinders are stupid expensive, uh, but I took a class last year at the Toledo Art Museum and we had a belt grinder there and it was just made things so much easier. So I spent the money on, what is this, Dan? Um, a mirror braid. This is what Jimmy Duresta suggested that I get. He's affiliated with them. And so, yeah, this is really nice. Uh, easy, quick change of the of the belt, which is super, super nice. This is a heater. We It's February in Northern Ohio, so it's a little, little cold. Uh, this is my chop saw. I've actually had this guy for four years now. Um, and I'm just now starting to use it. It's got the, I don't know what you call that, the abrasive blade. Every single time I use it, people are like, you gotta get the carbide tooth blade so you don't get all the, someday, okay? This is the angle grinder that I'm using most. I have two of them. I have a corded one. The battery one is so much easier to use, but it's also nice to have two angle grinders so you can have one for cutting and one for grinding. Another heater, because we're in Northern Ohio and it's February. Uh, we got fire extinguishers all over the place because my good buddy Jack, Jack, thank you, came and installed all these outlets on here. So we got tons of electrical outlets. And then down here, we have 220. We need 220 for the plasma cutter and the welder. Jack, thank you for installing that. He's a good dude. This is my plasma cutter. There is a local artist here and he does these beautiful, beautiful metal sculptures. And he's a really well-known artist. His name is Jim Havens. And I was over there visiting him and he's like, oh, you're getting started with metalworking. I have this plasma cutter that I don't use. Would you like it? Uh, yeah, sure, thank you. And I get it home and I look it up and it was like $2,000 set up. I went back and I'm like, did you know what you gave me? And he's like, yeah, I got other plasma cutters. You can, you can have that one. We are going to tour Jim Haven's studio and talk to him later on in the year. Super cool artist. You're gonna find him super inspiring. He's just got a, he's got a really, really good attitude about life. So uh, that is my plasma cutter. Over here, this is my welder. This is the Lincoln 210. You say what type of steel you're welding. So we got MIG and you hit okay. And then it tells you your polarity setup. So different types of welds require you to move things around down here. So we hit okay. And then our diameter of the wire that we're using, we hit okay. And then the thickness of your steel, and then you hit okay. And it gives you your suggested settings for that. It's the same as looking at a chart, but it kind of does it for you. And then you can override those settings here and here. So yeah, this one does MIG and TIG and, and all that. I just have to get the other accessories for it to do those other types of welds. So right now I am just doing MIG and I've never done anything else. No, no TIG, no stick. I love stick. Cheap welding helmets. I think this one's from Harbor Freight and I was having a really, really hard time seeing my welds. And it turns out that um, you spend a little bit of money on a better helmet, you can see better. So this one is the Lincoln one. Again, not sponsored, but this one had really good reviews. And I can see what I'm doing so much better. Uh, it was really, it was money well spent. When you have a plasma cutter, it uses compressed air and electricity to cut through steel. So you need an air compressor that has the duty cycle. Is that the right? I said duty. That's my first time ever saying duty in a video. Duty! It's gotta have enough SCFMs and cycles of duty to run this guy efficiently. So I had to get the big old Husky Home Depot air compressor, but this is nice to have in the shop because I can clean things up easily. I can tires, I can tires, 
This is my floor standing drill press. It doesn't quite fit over here, so it's, it stays over there. And then I just wheel it over here when I need to, but it's got this little mobile base. And this is what I use to drill holes out here which is what you use a drill press for. This is my old router table from the other shop that I've converted into, right now it's my welding table. I just, I just got some sheet metal on top. I did order one of those tables from weldingtables.com that is certified flat and it has all the holes in it so you can clamp things to it, which is gonna come in really handy. My newest hobby, it's taken over my life. Last fall, I picked up go-kart racing on dirt oval tracks. And this is the go-kart that I bought. There are some features about this chassis that I didn't like that wasn't very common. So I'm selling this to my buddy. So I'm currently putting it back together. I got this go-kart, which is all in pieces now. And this is the chassis that I'm going to model the new build off of. Currently have three engines. I don't need three engines, but one engine goes to that cart, which is being sold to my buddy. This engine came with that cart, which uh, once I build the new one, I'm going to sell that. And then this is the engine that my cousin built for me. Uh, it sounds, it sounds so good. Uh, too bad I don't know how to drive yet. The dirt oval, they call them left turn only chassis, have all these crazy bends in there because of science and whatnot. This is inch and a quarter DOM 0 0.083 thickness uh, mild steel for the chassis build, which is what most go-kart chassis are. A lot of the bigger race cars use chromoly, but we are using DOM mild steel. So this is for tube bending. It has this die in here that's made just for inch and a quarter. You can swap out the dies for different tubing. You can even do square tubing in here, but this goes in here like so. And typically you have this big lever that sticks out and then you just, you kind of, you, you do one of these things and the tube wraps around this die. But for that to work, this has to be bolted to the concrete, like it can't move. I can't bolt things to the concrete here in this shop because things have to be moved around and cars park in here. So I got this hydraulic jack that's hooked up to mine. And then this gets hooked up to the air compressor. And then that bends this tube around a die. The hydraulic jack, not necessary for most people, as long as you can bolt this to the ground. Another little tool that I have to assist me with the go-kart build is this tube notcher. When you're combining two pieces of round tubing, you have to do what's called a little fish mouth so the pieces mate properly and you get a good weld. And that's what this guy here is. So you stick your tube in there like so, and then you would tighten that down. You move this to the angle that you need that fish mouth and then this hooks up to a drill and you would, with a hole saw, you would create a little fish mouth on this guy. Uh, I haven't welded up any of the pieces yet because I need a little bit more practice for my safety and the safeties of the others on the track. I wanna make sure everything is glued together perfectly fine. So as far as the go-kart build, I'm not filming every bit of it, but I will come in like halfway through and kind of like, hey, this is where we are. This is how to use the tube bender. This is how to use the tube notcher and kind of give you like little progress updates with some tips in there. And then once the racing season starts, we're gonna do some vlog style videos at the track, like getting ready, what it takes to get ready, the prep, uh, unloading the carts and then how our typical race day works. How well did Pachuto do that day? So lots of cool content coming from this garage. Looking forward to the warmer weather. Have I mentioned it is February in Northern Ohio? I'm freezing balls right now. I do have a video on my wood shop tour that should be linked down below as well as at the end of the video. All right, folks, we'll see you soon. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate and make something. Dan. This is a, this is my Goodwill find. This is a, a classic Goodyear hat. So I need a hat. I need a, I need a get dirty hat. So this is going to be my, my get dirty hat. It's in really good shape, but hopefully by the end of the year, by the end of the season, it'll, it'll, 
<clears throat> you know what I'm saying? It means I, I did stuff. So yeah, this is my get dirty hat. 